you know, the first thing is be compassionate um, and, and be willing to engage in the process. Take your cues from the person, right? And certainly don't get into this comparative, I'm going to fix it. Let me tell you how you get over this. I just, last week we posted a, a video on, on LinkedIn and I gave several examples of, you know, the boss who said the best way to get over your the death of your father is to get on the plane on Monday morning and go visit your customers. That'll help you get over this. <laughs> well, that's that, that's not going to help, right? Um, so, so it's it's realizing that, and we've heard this a lot of times, right? It's nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And and our take on that, we have a slightly different version of that, which is first you care, then you lead. Mm. And people who do it the other way around will have direct reports but they'll never have followers. And so what you're trying to do here is create a, an emotionally safe environment where people feel comfortable enough that they can raise their hands and say, I'm struggling. And we actually have a model. It's in our book, The Dying Art of Leadership. We have a, we have a model that helps leaders think about and look at what, what they're seeing right? Mm. And where people are on this matrix to enable them to alter their, their leadership style, right? Because you're typically, you're probably going to have to communicate with this person more, right? Yeah. More, more frequently, right? Um, you're going to, you're not going to be able to just empower them as much as you used to, because they're not, they're not fully in the game, right? They're, they're struggling a little bit, right? They're distracted or they're depressed or they have all of these emotions going on. And so you have to be willing to be flexible, right? And you have to recognize that just because the person's back at work doesn't mean that they are back to themselves, right? Um, so engage in the discussion, recognize that it'll be emotional and that's okay. Listen more than you speak. Uh, is very, very important, right? Don't try to solve it. Don't try to give advice. Listen more than you speak. Be vulnerable. Don't be profound, right? Mm. If you're going to share the situation, you can do it by relating, right? But don't don't say things like, I know what you're going through. You don't know what you're going through. Everybody grieves differently, right? No yeah. matter how similar your situation is, you don't really know, right? Don't compare events, right? Uh, and just just say what's on your heart and then follow the cues of the person, right? But for God's sakes, don't ignore it and wait for performance to slip and then put the person in a position where their job's being threatened because they're not performing, all because you just let it go way too far, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, ironically, if you ever watch any episode of The Undercover Boss, you see this play out in every episode, right? There's at least one person that The Undercover Boss runs into who is grieving, who is struggling yeah. through some emotionally traumatic event. And the boss winds up engaging them in the discussion and learning the story and then oftentimes making changes to the organization itself as a result that's really that's a, that show serves as a great example of what how leaders should handle